So Julio, um, I mean, God, there's so much to catch up on, but I guess the big question is, you know, here in Oregon, life has been, we've all been locked down. We've been pretty sequestered for a while now, but we also have not had here in central Oregon, we've not had much of an impact, uh, certainly compared to probably your neck of the woods. Um, right. The COVID stuff has not been as big a thing. We're down to hardly any cases at all here. But right. what's it been like for you there? Because you live in Brooklyn now, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, uh, so what's, it, what's life been like for you there? Honestly, like in my neck of the woods of Brooklyn, the main thing that's different is just a little bit less people on the streets. Really, maybe almost the same. And they're just wearing masks. Honestly, right. like I go to um, my bodega for you know to go shopping for groceries. Right. It's like a block away. Um, everyone is just acts pretty normal. Um, so I wouldn't say that my neighborhood seems that affected. Like I, I walk my dog in the park. And, you know, people are like <laughs> on picnic blank. You know, pic picnic blankets and. Uh, <laughs> hanging out somewhere masks some are you know have masks but you know aren't actually wearing them right uh, definitely i feel like uh the news and you know the mainstream media has blown up new york to be like something crazier than what it was this kind of like post apocalyptic wasteland of body bags and sick people and yeah Exactly. And I started seeing these videos online of people going to like hospitals in New York and interviewing people. And they were like, where is this like, you know, craziness that everyone is like talking about? Right. So I definitely feel that there's something weird going on, um, especially in New York. And I saw like a video where um, the news had shown new york and like this room full of like people sick with covid but then it was like fake news and it was actually a picture used from uh that italy had right from italy yeah yeah so it's just i don't know it's very something it's very fishy <laughs> uh, i'm actually not worried so much about catching it as i'm worried about the way the way the world is reacting to it and how it's going to change everything after. Right. Right. At least a while, or at least until something, you know, worse comes along or something. Uh, right. Or we get, or, we get through the election season or who knows. It, yeah. It, it, say it seems like, just so you know, like where I'm coming from, I don't think that it's like a fake thing. Right. You know, but, I think the reaction doesn't fit what it is. I mean, hospitals are getting more money if they say someone died from COVID, you know, maybe they, they had it, but they really died because they were about to die from lung cancer or, you know, something else like that. Right. But that's, uh, I feel like there's something really strange going on. And I, I, right. I think, I think I'm not the only one. So. Right. I mean, I feel like, I feel like our, initial reaction when nobody knew what this thing was i feel like that was the right reaction to sort of isolate everyone away from each other until they could figure out how bad this was going to be but i think i think we have now flattened the curve whatever term you want to give it we've achieved mm -hmm. what the original goal was Right. of not overwhelming the medical system and not and and giving doctors researchers time to at least come to some understanding of how virulent this thing was how deadly it was how quickly it would spread all of that like you say i feel like now now is time to reevaluate if nothing else this reaction of how we're handling this thing Right. I mean, it's like they basically shut down the world overnight. Um, you know, a lot of people, including myself, lost jobs. Um, 
working, being an artist. I've been in the food and beverage industry for well, more years than I want to <laughs> <laughs> admit. Um, no, but I've been in it for a really long time, and I had a pretty decent job in the city managing a restaurant, and I okay. lost that. I lined, up, I lined up another job with a place that they were staying open in Brooklyn, and then they had to close because people were just not going out because right. everyone you know, was afraid and <clears throat> and uh, getting caught up in, I think, all this hype. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's been your literally your bread and butter now has been managing managing restaurants working within the food and beverage industry for a long time in yeah. addition to pursuing your art i mean you've i know you've always taken that very seriously right right yeah i i last year um i was working in this uh restaurant in new york for four years uh, it had been around for decades and it closed pretty suddenly um so i was like oh, i'm just gonna you know follow my art um i did it for over a year it was very stressful uh especially <laughs> in the city you know with the new york rent and just everything being so yeah. expensive. um but i also uh i learned some things about myself um i didn't like spending that much time being isolated you know just doing the art thing like after being used to having you know being in a restaurant with all these people that would be basically your family that you see all the time right um i do like i grew up an only child up until nine years old and then i had a brother but i always had a lot of cousins so i, I feel like i am comfortable with both of those situations being alone i like to be by myself i'll go to you know to eat by myself and bring my sketch pad or whatever I'm not one of these people that has to, you know, be with my friends to go out to eat or whatever. Right. Um, but it was a lot of time alone, you know, all day in the studio. Um, so then I kind of decided, I was like, well, maybe I need to, you know, because obviously the art is my life and who I am. But um, I was like, maybe I can balance, somehow figure out balancing uh, working in a restaurant um, and then plus to study money and I can just work on like, uh, serious art shows and you know getting work for you know solo shows at galleries and, and that sort of thing so have you been you and all of your neighbors or your friends there have you guys all been locked down and just isolated in your apartments all this time uh pretty much i mean i go to um like I said, I'll go to the store to get food or whatever, walk my dog. Um, I mean, you're free to like, you know, you can whatever, ride your bike, take walks, whatnot. I've just been working a lot in my studio, kind of taking advantage of having this time, which was kind of exciting the first couple of weeks. And then uh, <laughs> it was like, okay, this is getting, right. Um, right. Uh, getting a little old. Um, Especially when you don't know how long that's going to last. Right, exactly. Um, and then just, you know, financially not, ha not having money coming in. Um, and I've been waiting on this. There's like a, they're offering like a pandemic, um, assistance, uh, and, uh, I've been waiting for the New York has been crazy to sign. It took like four weeks just to get through. Right. And I've been waiting six weeks, I think. Uh, wow. and I, ever received anything but they just they were overwhelmed with millions and millions of people uh, you know applying for some form of you know um unemployment right uh, so that's been stressful uh so i've just been keeping busy and you know, i call a lot but it's just like you can't get through now um so that's been tough right uh, we'll see what happens because I don't know if I can get um, the second job back that I would. I don't. I don't know if they're going to reopen. I don't know. You know what's what's going to happen with that. Right. Um, but I, I would say, uh, like, I have, I have a friend uh, that comes over at least like once a week, so that's been nice. Um, I'm sure there are some people that have no one, so it gives me something to look forward to. Um, I have my dog, but other than that, I, 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 people live with their families or whatever. But um, 
I guess everyone's having, you know, different experiences based on, you know, what their situation is. Right. Well, I know like following you, <clears throat> following you on Instagram and through social media, I mean, you, you're pretty active and in, in promoting your work. Have you been pushing your artwork more aggressively through all of this? Or I don't know, is that, is that a factor for you? Or do you find there's any response to that? Like how hard have people shut down in terms of their interest in things like purchasing art? I would imagine that's a tough sell right now. Right. Um, I was worried about that. I think uh, it really is... Uh, it's interesting because it, it can go either way because some people are at home and they don't have a lot to do. People with money, you know, if they're right. working from home and they're like, oh, let me get online and they start like shopping. And they're like, oh, I've always wanted to be an art collector. Let me, this is a good time <laughs> to do right. that. Um, so I think it, it depends on the situation. I think, you know, people like me or, you know, someone who like lost a restaurant job, I'm sure they're not like, oh, let me start buying some art right now right um, they're probably you know stressed out as well but um i've had a lot of i've i've been working on a lot of projects that i had already started before so i haven't done too too many new things okay uh, but i'm about to to do the, to hit that up pretty strong um there's a little artist movement uh hashtag um uh artist support pledge um and basically artists post work for 200 like a piece for 200 dollars or less okay and anyone can buy it um and once that artist sells a thousand dollars worth of work they will purchase 200 dollars from another artist so just okay. everyone helping each other out um, I've sold, I posted a couple, they were just actually older pieces from last year, but um, they sold pretty quickly. Um, so once I get to like a thousand, I'll help out a friend or, you know. Uh, yeah. And what's the hashtag again? It's artist uh, support pledge. Artist support pledge. Okay. It's just like a hashtag on Instagram. Is that? Yeah. Um, people is that, follow sorry. Is that mostly like. Uh, New York based, Brooklyn based artist. Is that does it oh, far and wide? It started by this artist uh, in England. So it's yeah, it's it's, it's worldwide, um, and it's it's apparently it's become a movement. I mean, last thing, last time I checked, I think they had like a hundred and like it had been tagged a hundred and sixty or seventy thousand times. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's so, got a big reach. Right. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start some of those pieces and they'll be available soon, like on my Instagram. Oh, that's, that sounds cool. That's yeah. And when did that, when did that start up? Was that like right at the beginning of all this or more uh, recently? No, it was, it's, it's gone on for a little bit. Yeah. Towards the beginning, I think it probably took a minute and this guy came up with the idea and I thought it was great. Cause I've, through my career, I've always, um, you know, it's feast or famine, but when it's been feast, I've always bought art from, you know, younger artists or, you know, up and coming artists. Right. Uh, to help support them. So it's kind of cool that it's like an official thing that, you know, every people all over the world can get involved in. And I would imagine too, you, it's a great way to sort of be exposed to artists you wouldn't have found otherwise too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that, you know, a piece for two hundred dollars is a pretty good deal. And and some are, yeah. are like fifty, hundred bucks. So um, you know, if you are someone who's not being financially, you know, affected by this, this would actually be a really good time to, you know, start a, a collection and you would help, you know, feed <laughs> right. Feed some uh, starving artists. So and so like someone like yourself okay so you can get the piece for two hundred dollars through that hashtag movement what if someone right. wants to reach out and they're interested in one of your bigger pieces or a more expensive piece like what's the 
what's the way that you want people to find you to do something like that? Um, I mean, any, anything else I would still post on my Instagram, but I, I have actually had the idea of, because uh, that whole movement is just for 200 and below, but I, I thought of just on my own um, doing, like, it, let's say I just sold a piece for a thousand just straight. Right. And then I would, on my own, you know, spend 200 bucks on, on a, another artist's work. Oh, nice. Okay. That's so kind I, of just, just a personal. That's just Sorry. like my own. Gotcha. Yeah, your own like personal version of of that same concept. Right, exactly. Very cool. Very cool. So are you are you guys seeing are things opening up at all for you guys? I mean, here in Oregon it's we are in phase one of our reopening, which is you know, supposed to be on the business side, I think people are taking it seriously. Restaurants and businesses are trying their best to do it as safely as possible. But, you know, we've got some, <laughs> I think people have been cooped up for too long and they're kind of, their reaction is to pendulum the other way. And they're just sort of, it's a free for all. Certainly yesterday it seemed like people were being a little casual about things. What's it looking like? for you guys there are you starting to reopen yet or what's new york i think it was supposed to be this week uh last i checked it was like the 28th um i think new york is opening like new york state is opening in sections because um i mean a lot of people that don't new york they, they picture like new york state being like new york city and it's complete <laughs> it's almost like as soon as you pass new york city it's it reminds me a lot of South Carolina, you know, right. um, yeah. the landscaping and what, whatnot. Um, it can, it's very uh, rural, a lot of places. So I think uh, sections of New York are, are being able to slowly, like the, uh, the governor, uh, I think he put, a, put out a lot of requirements. And if a city or if people meet those requirements, then they can start like slowly. Uh, okay. Real things. I just had one of my uh, best friends went down to um, Charleston uh, just a couple of days ago. And she said that uh, like restaurants were open, bars were open. There was, there was less seating, you know, um, right, she went to right. the restaurant I used to work at Justine's kitchen in Charleston yeah. for a million years. I worked there. Um, and she Missed said, that place. <laughs> like it was, oh, yeah, she said it was, they still had to line out the door, but once you got in, there were a few less, um, tables right. but it was still it's not like uh, that place was huge to start with <laughs> right yeah right. um yeah it's a pretty small place but um yeah so that must be nice uh just to be able to you know after being cooped up so long to go to a bar go to a restaurant see other people you know yeah yeah i think uh humans I, I, we're naturally social creatures um tribal and it's not natural for yeah. us to be you know cooped up by ourselves all the time and has this i don't know has this process led you to like you want to explore new things in your work i mean i've seen some of your like the center series you've done on instagram mm -hmm. that you know are definitely fed by what we're going through right now are there any bigger paintings bigger pieces you're working on that are informed by all of this uh yeah I, yes uh somewhat um because i have my peacemaker character to uh he's always riding the rider on the horse yeah and when they did the the uh, social distancing uh, which was you know when you first heard of it, it was so weird <laughs> right, right. I actually did a, a, a painting of um, of the rider, and he's kind of just floating above the horse, like six feet. <sighs> um, but then I was like, I don't know, what if this is, you know, blows over quickly, and we're like, oh, yeah, remember that time where we went through that thing? So I was like, I don't know right. how much I want to commit to that, you know? Right, right. Uh, but it seems to be like it's going to be pretty big. Um, and then maybe people just want something that will remind them of 
that weird time, you know, that we went through this. But yeah. something tells me that it, this is just going to open, you know, other doors to who knows what. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. just, and and feel, thinking uh, about that future, what uh, – I don't know when it, when it starts back up, are you going to try to get back to, like you said, is you don't even know if the restaurant you worked for is going to open again. Like what do you have plans of what you're going to do, how you're going to sort of move yourself forward when all this passes over or, or are you just kind of taking it day by day? Um, I mean, I think it depends on how a lot of things play out, but, um, I've actually been seriously considering um, a move back down south. Okay. Um, to just to be with family, um, you know, when all this broke out, you, we didn't know how serious it was going to be. Um, I didn't know if it, you know if we we're going to be like under martial law or something. You can't leave the state, you know. Right. So I was, I kind of was really glad it, you know, didn't play out like that. But I, I got worried for a minute. Um, and then it got me thinking, like, you know, is New York going to even be the same? You know, is it right. going to be, like, a hot spot for art? Like, I, I have no idea, like, what, what the art world is going to be like after this. Um, it may just be, like, a largely online thing. Um, right. So, yeah, it's something I'm, I'm considering. Um, and, uh, but even, like, you know, just the fact that they're, kind of getting back to normal now down south um i just feel like if there's something if, if, <laughs> if this shit we're gonna hit the fan worth i don't know if new york is the kind of place uh where you right. want to uh so that's uh, something that i'm kicking around in my head we'll see what happens okay well look i just i like i said i just wanted to check in with you we're kind of as part of the podcast now we're doing just checking in with creatives all over and seeing how they're faring through all of this stuff and what their perspective is on it all. Um, I, I guess just, uh, you know, I'll let you go here in a sec, but one just for the, for the, for the show itself, for people watching, if you would just give us your Instagram handle again and where people can find you and what's the best place to go look for your work. Yeah. Uh, right now the best place to look for my work is on Instagram uh, at Coto C O T T O underscore Rivera R I V E R A underscore art A R T. Cool. Okay. Uh, and that can send you anywhere else. Okay. And we'll also make sure we put all the links and social media links and stuff in the description of the podcast and uh, see if we can point some, point some folks your way. But uh, Julio, it's, it's awesome to check in with you and see how you're doing, man. I am, I don't know, it's a flashback. Certainly good to catch up with you. You look, you look awesome. And like I said, following your work on Instagram, I'm just, I, I've got to I think it's time for me to invest in one of your pieces for sure. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll hold you up to, to see <laughs> yeah, you. For sure. Yeah, sure. All right, brother. We'll talk soon and uh, stay well, stay healthy, stay sane. You too. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, of course. We'll talk soon. All right, take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. The Call to Create with host Charlie Teal is presented by Ghost Village Films and captured at Open Space Event Studio in Bend, Oregon. If you like what you hear, subscribe, rate, and review on YouTube, iTunes, or your favorite listening platform. 